Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're talking about orchid roots. Specifically, what do we do about all of these roots that are growing outside of the pot through the drainage holes, through the ventilation holes, when it's time to repot our orchid? Do we cut them? Do we cut the pot? And well, this is a question that I got quite a lot in the past few weeks, so it is time to address it. Now, the short answer is yes, you can absolutely cut these roots if you can make sure that the orchid will not be set back afterwards. But you know me, I don't like short answers because they're most of the times incomplete. So today I will tell you my personal preference, why I decide to do what I do, but explain a little bit the factors involved in the decision making. So with that said, let's get to the repotting table and see some really outgrown orchids. So first of all, having roots growing outside of the pot through the drainage and ventilation holes is absolutely fine. In fact, it's pretty inevitable the more you have your orchid in the same pot, the more chances you have of the roots actually finding their way out of the pot. It's a good sign if you think about it because the orchid has a lot of roots, theoretically. And most orchids really don't mind it either because they're epiphytic. And if you think about it, all of their roots are practically aerial. We put them in pots just to make our life easier, but for them, it doesn't really matter. The problem indeed comes when it's time to repot the orchid, remove it from its old pot, put it in a bigger pot, or change the medium. You know, the mysterious process of repotting orchids. And I will tell you what I do. I always, 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 as much as possible, try to save the pot. But of course, I am first and foremost an orchid grower, so I do have the best interest of the orchid in mind. But when an orchid has so, so, so many roots, losing two, three, four roots really doesn't make any major impact on them. For my orchid, it's like nothing happens. But for me and what surrounds me, it is actually important that I save my plastic pots. Now, I know most of you guys are using plastic pots with your orchids, not clay pots, so I will refer mostly to the plastic pots. It is actually in your best interest to save plastic pots as much as possible and reuse them for years to come. How many years? You'd be surprised. I have this particular pot for about seven years now. And I know it's so old because the holes are super tiny in comparison to the holes that my pots currently have. Let me find a recent pot. There we go. This is the pot from my Pink Flamingo Phalaenopsis. Do you see how large the size of the ventilation holes are? Well, this is because back then when I customized this pot, I was using a heated nail. I didn't learn about the soldering iron trick yet. And I also remember the shape and the store where I purchased it from. So it has lasted me seven years and judging by how flexible it is, I think it's going to last me another seven at least which means that I don't have to spend money on a new pot. I don't need to waste time searching for transparent plastic pots, which we know are not so easily available in all parts of the world. And also, I'm being a little bit more friendly to the environment. Yes, I could absolutely recycle this, but you know what's better than recycling? Reusing. So this little pot was reused over and over and over and over again with I don't know how many orchids and it's still going strong. Now pots can be reused with the very same orchid if all you need to do is change the medium, but hopefully orchids grow and they will require bigger pots. That's perfectly fine because it's absolutely fine to reuse these pots with other orchids. And if there's one thing this orchid does, is create such a wonderful, let's say, addiction to orchids that inevitably, if you stick long enough in the hobby, you will purchase yourself other orchids, which might be smaller and might actually fit in the pot that you saved from a previous orchid. Plastic pots are actually the easiest pots to disinfect. All you need to do is wash them with a little bit of detergent. This is what I use to disinfect my pots and I use it because I have quite a big collection and statistically speaking, the more orchids you have, the more chances of transmitting pathogens you have. But with this stuff, in about a minute, my pot is clean, disinfected and ready to be used with another orchid. Now, the quality of the pot will influence durability, of course. There are on the market some pots which have been UV treated and pots which have not. 
And if you know a thing or two about plastic, you know that it's kind of sensitive to direct sunshine. It can become very, very brittle in time with exposure. So if you're not entirely sure if your pot is treated or is protected or if it's a good quality pot, all you need to do is try to shelter it from direct sunshine. I like to use decorative pots which simply shade the plastic pot inside. And in this way, even these pots, which I really don't know much about, I don't know if they're good quality, none of them actually became brittle so far, simply because I just sheltered them a little bit. Now, what I'm showing you here is a plastic decorative pot, which I know it's been treated, or at least that's what it says, and I had it for a few years. But if you cannot find something like this, just to be sure, just use clay pots. They're a little heavier, yes, they have their advantages and disadvantages, but you can rest assured that this type of pot will not become brittle with exposure to sunlight. It can break if you drop it on the floor, so be careful, but it definitely can do the job. So for me personally, it is important to actually reuse as much as possible these pots. So I do have a stack of them currently at the moment. These are excess. I keep them in a shaded place, in a safe space, because I know there will be orchids which will occupy them. If not now, then maybe this year. And if not this year, then maybe next year, but they will be put to good use. If at some point I won't need them, I will give them away. And bottom of the list, if I really, really don't need them or they become very, very brittle, I eventually put them in the recycle bin. But this has never happened before. In fact, some of my pots might actually have parts of them missing. Do you see this? Do I care? No, because still this is a perfectly good pot that I can still reuse for years and years and years. There are only advantages here. You save time, you save money, and you're a little bit more friendly to the environment. Who can say no, right? Well, there are instances in which even I say no, although very, very rare instances. Ideally, we repot our kids because they simply outgrew their pot. There's almost no more medium left. The orchid is spilling out of the pot, but there are instances in which we are forced to repot orchids because of bad medium or simply very unsuitable medium. And sometimes it happens that the orchids simply do not have a lot of roots. So I have here an example. I think it is the only example in my collection at the moment where I have an orchid. This is the Paraphalaenopsis albucensis. She's not a big root producer, but as you can see, one of the very few roots that it has has grown outside of the pot through the drainage hole and is growing towards the air. Now, I don't have to repot the circuit. She has been repotted last year, so the medium is still good for at least another year. But if I would need to repot this one, I would actually have to sacrifice the pot, or at least this would be my decision, because if I would do something to this root without actually seeing much roots happening in the pot, I might end up with a very, very sick back orchid. And that is really not what I want. So orchids that have root issues, maybe rare and very expensive orchids, very important orchids, which I don't have in my collection. I don't have anything that I'm propagating for reintroducing in nature or anything of the sorts, but I'm sure some people do have those types of orchids. In these extraordinary cases, yes, I would definitely give up the pot in order not to set back the orchid or worse. In this case, if I would remove this root, I'm guessing my orchid will actually be a little bit set back because it's a pretty, pretty large orchid. And just in case in the pot I only have one more good root, that is not enough to support this orchid. So I'm sure I will set it back. There are cases in which you might actually render the orchid completely rootless. Again, rare cases, but they exist. So this is the only case in which I would definitely give up the pot. And there is another case. You know when you buy orchids and they arrive in those very, very, very flimsy pots that you cannot really reuse or do anything with afterwards? I hate those pots. Those pots I do not save because I simply cannot reuse them. They're not stable. They're just not adequate. And I really, really wish nurseries would stop using them because they are a waste. So for me, this is the only reason why I would completely sacrifice a plastic pot. 
And then of course we need to consider the actual orchid we are repotting. For example, cattleyas, we kind of know already that they have sensitive roots, they tend to lose most of their older roots when we repot them. That's why we try to repot them at the right time. So for something like this, I wouldn't even bother trying to save the roots that grow out of the ventilation holes because even if I save them, there's no guarantee they will remain alive. So no point in damaging a perfectly good plastic pot. On the other hand, something like a Phalaenopsis has great chance to hold on to her roots. It isn't known to lose roots after repotting, unless it suffers from transplant shock, which I have a video on, I'll link it to you down in the description. It is another subject that I get comments quite often on, but if transplant shock doesn't happen, Phalaenopsis don't typically lose roots all that easy. Monopodials generally hang on more to their roots than sympodials because sympodials regenerate faster. And also they have a different type of growth, I digress. So I do have to consider the type of orchid and how many roots it has and how it will bounce back after this repotting when it comes to the root system. If I know most roots will be lost, then no point in sacrificing the poor pot. And lastly, how do I practically go about them? Well, at the moment, I don't think I have a very big orchid to repot, but I will try to exemplify. So in this case, we can see that we don't have all that many roots sticking out. I can just do my usual routine, press a little bit on the pot and then pull the orchid out. Sometimes these roots will just come right out, they will not be damaged. So I prefer to do that typically because I might be able to save a few roots, but there are circumstances in which, particularly here at the bottom, a root comes out and then goes in again and creates this very, very obnoxious net of roots, which simply doesn't let your orchid come out of the pot. What I do then is cut the roots flush with the pot. So in this case, I would go about it like this with a sterilized pair of pruners. So either on the bottom or the sides, I would cut them flush with the ventilation or drainage hole and afterwards pull my orchid out. Now, I personally don't put any cinnamon or anything else on the roots because of two reasons. One, the root might not make it anyway, it might be lost anyway, and if I make sure to remove all of the other dead roots, if I have one, two, three roots dying in the pot, it's perfectly fine. It's not going to spoil anything or affect anything. However, it's perfectly fine if you wanna trace back the root that you cut back to the stem and cut it from here, just to not have it breaking down in the medium. If you have the time to do that, do it, it's absolutely fine. And a second scenario is that the root that you cut will simply callus over on its own. Phalaenopsis are particularly good at doing this, even without me applying cinnamon or anything else. So in the case that the root does want to seal and create another branch, I don't actually choose to trace it back and cut it from the stem because you never know, it might actually survive. One way you can try to seal them, again, if you really want to and have the time, is by using either hot glue, either actually super glue. And this is an idea that one of you suggested. And what I usually use super glue with is mosses in the aquarium, and I know it's not toxic, so I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work here. So let's presume that this is where I cut my root. You can actually put a blob of super glue right here. Let it dry 10 minutes or so and then proceed to repot your orchid. And this is actually better than cinnamon because cinnamon can be washed away. In order for cinnamon to work, it needs to be dry to create that beautiful, perfect seal. If it's constantly exposed to water, it will eventually just wash away. So I do believe this is a much, much better way of sealing roots. You can actually use hot glue as well. I don't know if I mentioned that, but the trick with the super glue, I think is a really good one. So this is how I go about the roots that stick out of the pot. In most of the cases, I can save the pots and I can do so without the orchid even suffering. A few roots gone will not even matter for an orchid that has a very, very big root system. However, for me, it does matter to save these pots. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!